Welcome, everybody, to a four immediate release interview. I'm Shell Holtz, and uh, we're doing a bit of a video interview this time, and you'll see why later I'm going to be throwing some graphics from Toby's research uh, into the into the mix. But this is Toby Ward, the uh, president, uh, president, is that right, of Prescient Digital? Yes. And founder. Founder, president, chief bottle washer. And among the things that they do over at Prescient is a lot of work on intranets. And Toby, you teamed up with the IABC Research Foundation to do a study. Can you give us a little background on what the what the goal of the study was and, and what the methodology was for producing it? Sure. The study is actually year three of a study that began a couple of years ago as a study on the use of social media on the corporate internet. In the first two years, we called it the Intranet 2.0 Global Study. This year, we changed it to the Social Internet Study to look a little more in depth beyond just what is being used and to the degree it is being used within an organization. Uh, the methodology is sample size of 1,401 participants from organizations of all sizes and stripes from right across the globe. Uh, predominantly North America and Europe though, but there was a, a reasonable participation from Asia, Africa, South America, uh, Australia and New Zealand as well. The goal was to find out who has a social internet within the context and meaning of the social internet as I first defined it about a year and a half ago. and. To what extent are they using these tools and to what extent are individuals within the organization, both executives and frontline employees, contributing content and how satisfied are they with the use and deployment of these tools thus far? And what have you found so far? Let's, let's start with the good news. What would you say the, uh, the, the good news is that, that comes out of the study? Uh, the good news is, is that the social media revolution on the internet has jumped the firewall on the corporate internet. And about two-thirds of organizations have social media in some shape or form in some state of deployment on their corporate intranet. However, having said that, the bad news is, is that very few are doing it well. Uh, very few have invested much money into it, and the satisfaction levels uh, with social media is in fact very low. But those that are doing it have a true social internet. Those that are doing it well have a true social internet in the context of the meaning of social internet, which is multiple social media tools for use by all or at least most employee with content consumption woven into most aspects of the internet, including the home page. Yeah, and it's that weaving it in that's of, uh, of interest to me. I, you know, there are a lot of these tools that you can bolt on, and you have to go from the traditional intranet where you're seeing the storage of the, uh, the policies and the forms and, and the like, and maybe the company news is being delivered. But if you want to do something social, you have to go over to the social part of the internet. It's, it's you know, lithium or jive or something like that. Um, are there organizations that are, that are moving beyond that and, and really trying to bring these in? I mean, you know, one of the things that I'd like to see more of, for example, is the ability to send a status update, the, the internal uh, equivalent of a tweet, from whatever page you happen to be on uh, to the community that's associated with the topic of that page. So let's say you're on the expense reimbursement page and you have a question, you can fire off the status update to the expense reimbursement or the financial services community. Anybody doing that or is it still you know here's our regular traditional archive stuff uh, and, and and here's the social stuff yeah in fact uh, Cisco IBM and Verizon are three great examples and all are three in-depth case studies being presented at the Internet Global Forum conference in New York November 9th and 10th where that type of uh, messaging uh, that uh, synchronous messaging from virtually anywhere on the intranet uh, that's at least woven into the, the main corporate intranet or portal. Uh, people are able to find out what other people are doing, messaging them, and even in some cases like Verizon and Cisco, 
call people as well right through the intranet. So it's a true unified, integrated social experience on the corporate intranet behind the firewall. Now, my perception, uh, just being out among organizations in, in, in the course of my work, uh, is that social networks where you can establish the profile and form groups of people who do similar work or have similar interests or you know, members of a community of practice uh, can, can start communicating with each other and, and sharing information and knowledge and assets. Uh, it, it seems to me that that's what's growing faster than anything else. Uh, your research seems to point to blogs, though, as you know, the thing that most organizations have adopted so far. Uh, you're right on both accounts. Social networking, employee networking, is growing the fastest out of all the social media tools. Absolutely. But still the most popular and most widely deployed social media tools on the corporate internet are blogs, followed by discussion forums, instant messaging, and wikis. But the highest growth is in fact in employee networking, social networking for employees. And that's largely driven by SharePoint. But uh, other organizations are investing in other platforms. You mentioned a couple, social text, social cast, thought form, to name a few, that are um, slowly creeping into the marketplace and getting some penetration and some, some lift. Well, you and I were both at the Thought Farmers conference in Vancouver a week ago, and I was having a conversation with those guys, and they told me that you know, their solution is really meant for the small-medium business, and it's meant to be turnkey. Uh, it's not something that you add to the Internet. It is the Internet, and that way they are able to integrate the social stuff with the others. Uh, are you finding uh, in, in the results of the, the study that there are a lot of organizations that are, are, are taking that approach? Not yet. Not yet. Uh, the true social media platforms power only about 4 to 5 percent of all the intranets out there. Most intranets are powered by portals and content management systems or custom builds or hybrids of the two. So the social media platforms to power the entire intranet still have a small penetration of 4 to 5 percent, but that was 0 percent, you know, a few years ago. So. It's gaining traction, it's happening, it's not unlike open source where that was something new and cool only a few years ago and now it's a, a solid foothold. The social media platforms like a Thought Farmer and uh, Social Text and Mind Touch and the others are, are slowly gaining a little traction, but a lot of them are not exactly cheap either and so uh, they're also finding that they need to compete in the areas of enterprise content management, document management, search web content management, um, portal application integration, for example. So as we've seen a blurring of lines between the content management systems and the portal solutions, uh, whereas CMSs are starting to look like portals and the reverse is also true, we're starting to see uh, social media platforms take on characteristics of CMSs and portals as well. Now let's talk about SharePoint for a minute uh, because you, the, the, the study certainly reinforces the impression that I've been getting out there, which is that SharePoint is almost eating the world. You know, people who suggest to me that Microsoft might be on the ropes as people move to, you know, mobile platforms and the like, uh, I don't think they see how many implementations of, of SharePoint uh, are, are being sold. Uh, it's huge, isn't it? It really is massive. Uh, numbers indicate that about two-thirds of organizations, of all organizations, have SharePoint somewhere in their organization. It may not be powering the main page, but it may be powering a business unit group or a work group over here or team sites over here. Uh, about one-third of organizations, though, are using SharePoint to power the main internet, and more than half, about 55%, are using SharePoint for social media, principally through my sites and the wikis and blogs that are integrated into the web content management platform of SharePoint. So SharePoint is still most dominant. Uh, it will continue to be even more dominant, mainly because they own so many organizations in terms of enterprise software. You think of Windows, you think of Outlook and Exchange. Uh, you think of Microsoft Office. So they've already got their tentacles in there, and they are fantastic sales and marketers. 
So, uh, you know, they got people hooked on SharePoint a few years ago through the free versions, such as WSS, uh, and even gave away licenses to 2007 bundled with Windows and Microsoft Office contracts, for example. Now people are seeing uh, and, and buying 2010 because, but let's face it, the previous versions of SharePoint was, well, they were underwhelming, to say the least. And I know this wasn't part of the survey, but just as a, a point of interest, can you share your views on, on using SharePoint as the platform for the entire intranet? Absolutely. I think SharePoint is a fantastically powerful uh, solution that's ideal for a small to medium-sized organization. Not the very smallest, but small to medium, and that as a main internet platform. However, SharePoint is, as I like to say, a mile wide and about an inch deep. So there is everything in the kitchen sink that you could possibly want out of the system on that system, and it is also a development platform, but very few components of it are best in breed. I'm thinking web content management, I'm thinking social media, I'm thinking search, uh, among the other uh, applications and tools that are available for SharePoint. So, you know, it's a relatively safe um, solution, you know what you're getting into, but it's difficult to really customize without spending a lot of money, and it's a difficult difficult to make it perform best of breed. Um, and, and last but not least, it's not cheap either. So it, once you become a medium and large sized organization and you look at $100 per user per year, that's really expensive. I mean, we're talking license and maintenance alone is in the millions of dollars per year Forget about deployment and customization and design, for example. Uh, when you look at an organization of you know twenty thousand or more employees, for example, mm -hmm. and uh, traditionally SharePoint hasn't been the best performing platform. Although uh, the results so far on SharePoint 2010 is that it's it's much better than 2007. You mentioned uh, earlier that the results of the study indicate that people aren't terribly satisfied with the social elements that have been implemented on their intranets. Can you talk about that a little? No, they're not. We, we looked at total overall satisfaction. We also measured employee satisfaction levels and executive satisfaction levels. In fact, uh, they're all very similar. Employees and executives almost dead even in terms of satisfaction. 28% rate them as good or very good. Unfortunately, 32% uh, of employees rate these tools as poor or very poor, and executives, 35% of them rate them as poor or very poor. So the dissatisfaction levels are higher than the satisfaction levels, and that's really a failing grade. Yeah. Even if you add the, the, the satisfied, the neutrals, the three out of fives with the goods and very goods, you get a passing grade. But when you get a dissatisfied uh, cohort that large, it really is, is a failed deployment. And part of the reason is people are using whatever has come out of the box with SharePoint 2007, or they're just using free download open source software like WikiWiki or WordPress, for example, um, or Blogger, or a private Facebook group, which leaves little to be desired behind the firewall. Um, these are very simple solutions, and if they're not implemented correctly with a healthy dose of change management, because as I like to say, these tools are two-thirds people in the process, one-third technology. They won't live up to expectation. They won't be used up to expectation. People certainly won't be satisfied with them. And, and yet you're seeing some return on investment from these tools. We are seeing some return on investment with those organizations that care and measure it the vast majority of organizations are not measuring it. So those that are waiting for some spectacular business case and a return in terms of dollars and cents and using social media behind the firewall, you're going to have to look a little bit and you're going to have to have a plan for making it work in that way in your organization. Uh, it can be done, it just requires a little bit of groundwork. But those organizations that have measured it have measured successfully. What are they looking at in terms of measurement? Are they looking at uh, cost reduction or time to market? Did you, did you look at different dimensions of, of return on investment? Absolutely. Um, employee productivity is a big one. 
Uh, that is obviously a softer benefit uh, that's a little more difficult to quantify and sometimes seen as part art than relative science. But cost savings is a dynamic. Uh, time to market is, uh, is a dynamic, but also revenue generation. You think of the sales organization and their ability to collaborate and get information a lot faster and more effectively, well, then they can go and sell a lot more efficiently. Also think of internets that encourage people to um, submit referrals or clients or sales prospects via the internet and the ability to convert those prospects into wins or sales for the organization. These tools can also deliver sales, believe it or not. Uh, one of the things that really surprised me looking through the, the survey results is how little a lot of organizations are, are investing in this. Yeah, are, they, are they succumbing to the, the myth that social media is, is really, really cheap or free, or is there just not a lot of support that would lead to the kind of investment that would really make this stuff work well? That's entirely true. Uh, and However, <laughs> social media, some social media is free and is cheap but sometimes you get what you pay for. Now, WordPress is, is an example of a free solution that you can download, but you still have to customize it and make it work, which is a fantastic solution, and I use it to power my own blog, internetblog.com. However, uh, you do need to implement it correctly, and you need to use it correctly. And so the success of uh, my blog has little to do with the technology. It has everything to do with uh, the writing and the engagement with the readers, like any blog, like any good blog or social media tool. So again, two-thirds process of people, one-third technology. The other thing is, is change management, as you know, and that's particularly important in the organization because the intranet is not the internet. People use the internet very differently. We go on the internet to be informed and entertained largely and to be social. And we do a lot of surfing stuff. We go to Twitter and Facebook and see who's posting what. We click on this link and that link and we go and check out news and we click on this link and it drives us over to YouTube, etc. The internet is a very different experience. When I as an employee go to the internet, I'm there for a very specific person to grab a policy, a document, to look up someone's phone number. I may glance at the news on the home page, if in fact that's the default home page. But I want in and off as quick as possible because I've got work to do. So those executives and those individuals that worry about employees wasting time on social media, it, that is a true myth and it's a um, misinformed uh, preconception that just doesn't exist because when you're in that work mode, you're in that work mode. <laughs> yeah, and I, I remember Steve okay. Crescenzo had a line once. He said, here's something you will never hear an employee say to his spouse, and that was, uh, honey, no breakfast for me. Employee Communications has new articles up on the Internet, and I'm going in early to read them. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, the same can be true with the my sites or the, the wikis or blogs. Like, you know, no one's rushing out for these. In fact, you do need to sort of hit people over the head that, uh, okay, our CEO is posted a new blog or podcast to come and see it. Maybe over time, over years, they'll become, it'll become a, a naturally sort of reoccurring thing, reinforced as part of a cultural mosaic that I go and check out that blog on a regular basis. But it does take months or years to get there. Yeah. Another part of the investment that surprised me was how few people are being dedicated to managing the Internet and the social dimension of the Internet. Uh, what, what, what were the findings on staffing? Well, we didn't really explore that statistically. Um, but anecdotally and from the comments and the feedbacks, from some of the organizations that we're talking to, is that the, the management of these tools is completely mixed. Sometimes it's in IT, sometimes it's in corporate communications, sometimes it's within the business group or user group that deployed the technology because, for example, uh, the sales group wanted to use SharePoint for the MySites type collaboration internally in that document repository that is so effective within SharePoint. So there is no one rule per se, but for the greater internet, we do know that uh, communications is the, the number number one manager and owner of the internet. However, HR and IT are usually closely involved in some shape or form in some collaborative structure, either formal or informal. 
and that uh, you know usually that the numbers supporting the internet and these tools are numbers that are not too dissimilar from corporate communications. So, you know, a, a very large organization of 100,000 or more employees is usually going to have a corporate communications group of uh, several hundred, whereas one of uh, a few thousand may have a corporate communications group of two or three. And therefore, we're seeing that the management of these social media tools, the staffing models and levels are very similar to corporate communications. This is a pretty uh, rich, detailed report. It's over 40 pages. Uh, as, as you look at all of the data that has come out of it, what would be your recommendation for an organization that is either looking to start incorporating social media or is already doing it, it's not working well, and they want to try to fix it? Firstly, you need a plan. What is it that you're hoping to do? What is it that you're hoping to solve or achieve? Are there pain points, challenges, or problems you need to overcome? Or is it something you want to achieve in terms of 80% employee engagement, for example, or user satisfaction or executive satisfaction? Have a plan, set these objectives and goals with defined outcomes, measurable outcomes, so think KPIs or CSIs, critical performance indicators, measures in other words, and then start thinking about the functionality that you want out of these tools. Um, are you, do you want user comments? Do you want user ratings? Uh, can anyone post anonymously? strongly recommend that you don't, that there be no anonymous postings or, or comment. Got my vote on that. And, and each tool needs sort of a, a starting point. You know, if you're going to get into blogs, you might want to start with a shared blog. Uh, I like the shared executive blog. And, and the survey results showed that there aren't a lot of executives involved uh, in, in the social activities in the company. Well, actually, uh, they're becoming a, a lot more involved. Um, of those groups that are most involved with social media, it's corporate communications followed by customer service, IT, HR, and the executive group, the C-suite, is not far behind them. In fact, it shows that about of those organizations that have social media, about half have executives that are regular contributors, that is to say, at least once a week in some shape or form. Um, so that's actually a good place to start because if you've got an executive team of say 10 and you say, well, we only want you to blog maybe once a month or once a quarter, then you're getting regular postings and contributions on a regular basis once a week or once every two weeks and yet no one has to do much more than three, four, six a year for example. Uh, but you'll always find someone, some keener, or even in the C-suite, who's going to want to do it more and will, will shoulder the, the burden. And that's a great place to start. And if you incorporate those posts and highlights into your home page and you redirect from news stories and wikis and discussion forums and see discussion forums with content and topics that are being discussed on the executive blog, you'll get traction over time. Cross-promoted in newsletter and email, you're going to get what you want. I'm just have to think like a corporate communicator and, and build in that communications plan. Now, if you're just getting started, you, you haven't done any of this for the first time, one of the challenges is, is around platform, right? <clears throat> are you going to use Moss? Are you going to use a, a content management system or a portal? And what a lot of organizations end up with is, is the IT department saying, well, we already have a relationship with this organization or we have a contract or they're offering it to us at a huge discount. And so you end up with something that isn't based on requirements. Uh, it, it's based on, you know, just some, some fiscal consideration. Uh, what's your recommendation to a communicator who wants to get it right in terms of making uh, the, the kind of recommendation that's going to lead to the right platform? Don't be sold a solution. Select your solution. So develop your plan and those objectives and goals and figure out the type of functionality that you want. And based upon those requirements, you know, add weights and scores to these things and then evaluate solutions against those criteria and, and make your selection. Now, however, most of you don't have a choice. You're going to get handed whatever IT is already purchased and most of the time that's going to be SharePoint. However, uh, there is a study done by Somebody. I just, I just tweeted it earlier this week. I was going to say AIM, but it was uh, Forrester. 
uh, sampling 512 customers. And they, they found that uh, more than 50% of organizations are augmenting SharePoint with third-party solutions. More than 50%. So don't think that SharePoint, if you're particularly a larger complex organization, is going to be the be-all and end-all. You're going to probably want to augment and improve upon some of the functionality that you see there. Uh, so there's that to think about as well. But once you build that criteria, select the solution based upon those needs. And if you're forced to work with a solution to, um, developed by IT, you have to stand up um, and be aggressive about your needs and requirements and tell them exactly what is needed. And if you're not going to get your way and they're not going to give you what what you want, you need to escalate it upstairs to the C-suite. Get your champion to speak out for you and make it happen. Because let's face it, most organizations are uh, the chain and command structure that we all know well, or some version of it, and the buck stops upstairs. It's the executives that have the power, and if they need to go to bat for you, they need to go to bat for you. Now, like I say, this is a pretty dense report. Uh, are, are there any other results that really jumped out uh, at you that, that are worth sharing? Yeah, absolutely. So we look beyond just what sort of tools are on internet and the type of technologies. We also said, to what degree is your internet a social internet? And of those, by the definition we defined earlier, multiple social media tools and uh, for all and most employees woven into the homepage and regular content consumption, 50, more than 50% of those that have at least one tool said they have a social internet, but when we dug a little bit deeper and, and said, you know, multiple tools available for all employees and woven into the homepage, only 14% of organizations, uh, of those organizations that have social media, uh, have a true social internet. So that's about 10% of organizations. But let's face it, the term social internet has only come to be in the last 18 to 20 months. And now we've got already 10% of organizations with a social internet. That's really, really impressive and powerful. And largely that's being driven by what you saw and you noticed earlier, that's employee networking or the social networking behind the firewall on the internet. So when is this report going to be available and where will people be able to get it? Well, the preliminary report is only available for VIPs like you, Shell, and uh, the folks at IABC who are currently combing through all aspects of the data and the report. So the final results are ready, the report is written, but it's just going through the last few edit checks and reviews and before it becomes available in about two weeks' time or so. And uh, I know that a lot of what came out of this uh, survey is going to be part of this global intranet summit. Uh, can, and, and it's not like I'm not aware of this thing since I'm speaking there, but can you, can you talk about that just a little bit? Yeah, the uh, Internet Global Forum is coming up November 9th and 10th in New York, and it's North America's only dedicated conference to intranets, although one or two have popped up since then, surprisingly. Um, and uh, we have some fantastic speakers uh, delivering some very impressive case studies, like the aforementioned Cisco, IBM, and Verizon, although I'll be reviewing the Cisco case study in my workshop on the first day. The first two days are workshops, uh, and we even have some uh, great speakers coming from the Internet Innovation Awards in Australia, and our friend Kurt Sorensen from Denmark is coming and doing a presentation on the very best internets from Europe. So we'll have a global look and feel, and there's going to be lots of social media supporting all of this stuff, and underlying and supporting that is the social media findings, which recipients and attendees of the, uh, the conference will get a full copy of. Sounds great. I'm looking forward to getting out there. Uh, Toby, great talking to you. Looking forward to seeing you there. Thanks for having me on FIR, and thanks to all for tuning in and listening. Talk to you soon.